Namaste. Thank you so much for joining practice this morning. As always, please respect your limitations. And if you feel comfortable, very comfortable doing the, the variations and you're very familiar with them, then I invite you to explore them. Otherwise, please modify as you need to. And remember, that practice is an offering, and how you're feeling is to an extent affecting all beings. So, with that in mind, practice with consciousness, with mindfulness, and with reverence. So, let's begin. Stay up tall and straight. Close the eyes. Bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need can already be found within. Let's begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you are everywhere. strong desire for, for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. 
and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Only peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let's do now the mantra for purification three times. If you know it, you can do it along with me, of course. If not, imagine you're singing it through the voice of the Guru. And you derive all the benefits as though, as though you're chanting it perfectly. The, pure, the benefits being the purification of the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantrikaksham Sa Ba Ya Pihantra Ha Schi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantrikaksham Sa Ba Ya Pihantra Ha Schi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sa Ba Ya Bihantra Ha Sjihi Purify our pranayama to purify all the nadis within. There's count, there's at least 350,000, maybe as high as 700,000. All to say there's countless numbers of them that reside all the way with it, all throughout the body. So imagine then, when you purify them, they open up and they make you more um, in a position to realize all that you want. And the more you realize for yourself, the more you can share with others. So imagine for the purifier pranayama, you're drawing in the best of the best, all the way throughout the body. Bring it all the way up to the crown, and as you exhale, you're exhaling out all the impurities. So, the left hand in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb connected on the left knee, right hand, Vishnu Mudra, second, third fingers fold down to the palm, turn the palm towards you, it's no longer Vishnu Mudra at this point, it's a mudra that we use for pranayama. For the technique, inhale for four counts through both nostrils. Raise the chest as you're doing it, so that when you hold the breath for 12 counts, you bring your chin on the chest without hunching your back. Keep your back very straight. Engage the throat and root lock throughout the breath retention. Contract the root muscles, pull them up towards the navel. Imagine you're gluing the belly button against the front of the spine and pushing the pelvic floor up. You bring the chin on the chest for the throat lock, the tongue to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth to seal off the lock, and the attention is at the space to the eyebrows. For the exhale, you exhale for a count of eight through the left side and through the and you do that for eight counts and you try to synchronize it so that you're completely empty by the eighth count so the thumb for the right nostril the right ring finger for the left nostril so let's do it together five rounds sing up tall and straight exhale completely empty the lungs inhale three four hold the breath third eye attention two three Four, apply the throat and root lock. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out through the left, release the right ring finger. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale through both nostrils for four. Inflate the lungs, raise the chest, then hold the breath for twelve again. Everything stops, all the mind fluctuations, all the what well, movements and the emotions are as though they're frozen. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out to the left side, release the locks as you breathe out. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, both sides. Inhale. Three, four, hold for twelve. Really try to concentrate on the space in the eyebrows to draw, attract all the prana there. 11, 12. Exhale out to the left side, slowly, gradually. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Inhale again. 3, 4. Hold the breath for 12.
Exhale out through the left side. Gradually and steadily. Last time, inhale. Fill up the lungs. Hold the breath. Chin on the chest. Remember the throat's in a root lock and the attention of the space between the eyebrows. Step to the forebrow. Exhale out to the left side. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring the right hand down. Now bring your attention to the space between the eyebrows, the center of the forebrow. I'm going to chant the sound sun, S-U-N. As you're doing this, imagine we're concentrating on vibrations produced by the latter part of the sound, the N sound that produces a humming. Imagine those vibrations being strong enough and loud enough to dislodge all the impurities from wherever they're sitting in the body and bring them out into the bloodstream to be carried out of the body. You can also bring your, ten think of the pituitary gland, which is in that area as well. The pituitary gland is a hub of the endocrine system. So you're bringing about radiant, healthy glandular, the glands all throughout the body as well. So exhale completely. Take a deep breath in. Center of the forebrow. Keep your concentration there. Sun. Sound is sum, S U M. Concentrate on the latter part of the sound again that produces the vibrations, and the vibrations help to sharpen the mind. Take a deep breath in. Sum. any changes in the state of mind, body, or the emotions, have no concern as to what you observe. Just be the witness watching it all. Whatever thoughts enter into your head, be unconcerned, be undisturbed, be unjudging. Through this practice, we learn to let go of the ego, the identification of the body, the mind, and the emotions. You are none of these. All that you perceive, all that you feel, hear and taste, all that you, all that comes through the senses is not you. Fix your mind on what is beyond that, that which is beyond the infinite, immutable, stainless, eternal being that resides within, that is your true nature. 
infinite in its potential to evolve even to a greater extent all the qualities of compassion, love, wisdom, courage, determination, and on and on. And through the practice, through the imitation of the forms, we see how that all those divine qualities are, of God are reflected in each and every being in each and in, in their own special and very unique way. So now let's begin the practice with that intention in the mind. Come to standing. So we'll start off with spiritual breathing. Bring the feet about 10 inches apart, the arms above the head, the palms slightly facing up. From the fingertips, inhale, the best of the best universe, down through the arms and into the center of the chest, the right side of the physical heart, the spiritual heart. Pull it all there, what you drew in. Hold your breath, hold the attention at the spiritual heart. Exhale, just your breath out through the fingertips. Everything that you drew in stays in. You inhale again. Attract everything that you need by your attention. Feel it coming down into the arms, flooding you and coming right into the spiritual heart. Holding at the heart, hold the breath. Exhale out through the arms. Just the breath leads back out through the arms and out through the fingertips. Last time, inhale, draw on everything they need, the best of the best, which is in fact probably what everybody else desires as well. Holding in the heart is an offering for God and for all beings. Exhale out through the fingertips, send out just the breath. Bring the arms down. Let's continue some exercises to prepare the body for the practice. Keep on being a witness, watch your body move all by itself. Let's start to turn from one side to the other. Feel so the arms are heavy ropes. Walking against the body. And start to move the shoulders faster. Feel so the arms are dead. Um, get the body in which way that he flies side to side. And then start to slow it down. Good. Hands on the hips now. Circle the head. If it's if you can't do the full circles, you can do half rotations. One one ear to the other. Chin comes on the chest in between. And then switch the directions. If you did have circles, you may start from one ear, go back, bring the back of the head to the top of the back and into the other ear. And back the other way. Good. Now spin the right arm forward. Feel as though you had a weight of five pounds in your hand to give yourself more momentum to swing. The arm feels heavy. Go in the other direction now. Make as though you're about to throw a ball, winding up. And then the other arm, left arm. And then go back. Release. Take hold the arms over the uh, elbows, the elbows over the head. Bend to your left. Go up. Go to the right. Push the hips out towards the left. Hollow out the underside of the body. No wrinkles form in the waist if you can. To the left again. Come up. Go to the right. And come back to the center. Make circles over your head. Little circles. Mostly just moving the head, neck, and shoulders. And then start to add the chest and the upper back into the movement. 
and then large circles in front of the body if you feel up to do so. Like so you're following the motion of an airplane propeller. Good. And one more. Come all the way up. And then switch directions, starting off with little circles again over the head. And start to make the circles a little bit bigger, the chest and the upper back come into the movement. And then the whole torso, if you feel comfortable, just the circles, hinging at the hips, sweeping the elbows down close to the ground, across the feet. And then come all the way up. Release. Shake out the wrists, move the fingers very, very rapidly. As though you had no control over the hands, they're moving all by themselves. And up and down. Good. Now from here, lion's breath. The eyes go wide, the tongue hangs out of the mouth. Imagine you're pouncing a lion. Look like a lion pouncing. up to the side. If you like, you can put your hand on a wall or a chair. Swing right leg back and forth. Chuck it. You need to the shoulder. Throw the leg back. Make as so though you're going to kick yourself in the head from behind. And then the other leg. Always so move according to your condition, so done if you need to. And then release. So now let's come to the front of the mat, hands to the heart center. Surya Namaskar. Imagine the light and the warmth streaming down on you from the sun is the wisdom and the love of God. Infuse yourself with it, send it out to all beings everywhere. May all beings benefit from this practice and feel what we feel. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back. Come down, hands to the ground. Bend your knees if you need to bring your hands flat on the ground. Right foot back, lower down knees, sit down to the seat. Come into high plank. Bring the knees down, the seat all the way back behind the heels. Glide forward into the cobra. Roll the shoulders back, bring the head up and back. All the way back again, the seat behind the heels. Glide forward, tug at the floor, pull it towards you to propel yourself forward with more power and ease. All the way back again. Glide forward, brush the nose to the ground. Raise the head, open up through the heart. Roll over your toes, Anubhukha Savanasana. The head drops below the arms, the belly towards the thighs. Then the right foot steps forward. If that's too difficult, you can lower the knee down. If the foot doesn't make it all the way, Use your right hand to assist the foot forward. Drop your seat down close to the front heel. And then the feet come together, Uttanasana, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Engage the buttocks in the upper back as you reach up and back. Stay strong in the back bend and then come forward and down to Uttanasana. Left foot back, push back to the heel. Feel the stretch from the heel all the way to the crown. And then to high plank, knees down, bring the seat back, glide forward again, go between the arms, come up smoothly, gracefully, like a snake creeping through the grass now, glide forward, raise your head up as though you're the serpent peering at the world, and all the way back, one more time, slide forward, Take the head back. Roll over your toes, Adho Mukha Savanasana. Lift the seat up and back. Head below the arms. And then the left foot steps forward to the hands. Feet together, bow to the legs, a gesture of humbleness. Come right to stand and reach up and back. Stretch the whole front of the body. Approach it to nature, which again is boundless, limitless. Raise your arms up. 
go down. Don't worry about the breath. Just move the body in a way that feels natural and comfortable. Right foot back. That keeps your breath steady and uniform. Bring the feet together. Breath will figure it out and deliver ease and grace and fluidity and movement. Ashtanga Namaskar. Knees, chest, forehead down. Glide forward into the cobra. Pull out the head up and away from the rest of the body. Bring the seat up and back. Hasta Bring the right foot forward. Sink down to the seat. And then if you come together, bow down again humbly. Rise up to standing. Hands back to the heart. Up again. Sweep the arms over the head. Go down. Every movement reflecting devotion, surrender, humbleness. Left foot back into the plank. Lower down. Knees, chest, forehead. Make it so that through your divine dance, devotion, bring the head up and back. All the way back into Aramukha Savanasana. Left foot forward, sink down through the seat. If you come together, Uttanasana, pull the body to the legs, head down. Come right to standing, reach up and back. Come back home, head to the heart. Another variation, raise your arms up. Keep watching while they're moving. Bring the hands down. Lift the hand, chest, press into your hands, hold your breath. Hop or walk back into Chaturanga. Or just step, uh, and then from here, you can either come into Cobra or you can swing up into Upward Facing Dog. Try to get your knees and hips up off the ground. Imagine you had a hinge at the tops of your legs. Bend the body back so you're trying to fold the body in half. Imagine your dog howling at the moon. Uh, Telescope the neck out of the shoulders. Then roll over your toes, tuck the chin in, downward facing dog. Here, pulse through the chest, try to get your chest closer to the ground. Keep your arms straight, but keep trying to work the shoulders by bringing the head down, maybe the forehead, maybe the nose, maybe even the chin. Push the seat back. Always again, according to your condition, don't go to a place of pain, distress, anxiety, or suffering. That's what, not what you want to transmit. Lift the heels, bend the knees. Hold your breath, hop or walk forward. Pull the body down onto your legs, exhale. Pull the body down tight. Push the chest against the thighs. And come all the way up, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Again, raise your arms up. Create life, create space. Approach your true nature. Pull the body down onto your legs. Uttanasana, gesture of bowing and humbleness. Lift head and chest again. Hold your breath. Bend your elbows as you go back so that you land softly. No big jarring motions, no jerky, hard, loud movements. Into the upward facing dog. Moving away, that's pleasing to observe by the witness. Now, round your back, the chin back into downward facing dog. Oscillate between these two poses. Round your back to come forward, tuck the tailbone, and then push the shoulders back, chest forward, so you try to push the heart right through the rib cage. Back the other way. As you come back, tuck, imagine trying to push the heart right between your shoulder blades. In downward facing dog, melt the heart towards the ground. Be humble like the dog is loyal to its master. Good. Now lift the heels, bend the knees, hold the breath again. Bring your feet forward, hopping or walking. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to stand and reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Bring your arms up. Go down. Uttanasana. Now from here, you have a choice. You can just see, you can rock forward and back. Lift your heels, rock back onto your toes. Try to get your shoulders over your fingertips. Try to keep your arms straight. You can bend your knees, of course, if you need to, if your arms don't allow for that. If you want, you can hold your breath, push into the ground firmly, pick up your seat. Try to get your seat right over your wrists. Three times. Good. And down. If you like, you can go back into the next time. You can extend the legs. Bend your elbows back into Chaturanga. And into Upward Facing Dog. Roll back into Downward Facing Dog. Now again here. 
option to just bring your seat back, bend your knees deeply, and then round your back to so come forward, shoulders over your fingertips, and all the way back. Keep your arms straight, we'll push into your ground, hold your breath as you come forward and back. Or you can see if you can incorporate a float. Really grip the floor with your finger pads, the base of fingers and heels, your palms, knees into your body, hold your breath. And see if you can come up. Three times. And the fourth time, land your feet very softly at your hands, hopping or walking. Uttanasana, pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to stand and reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Take pause here. From the heart, inhale up to the space between your eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart. Remain established in divine love towards all beings everywhere. Just keep doing your practice because it is your divine duty to do so. Release the arms. So let's try some balance poses here. Let's start off with ballet pose, standing on your left foot. Bring your right heel up. Hold the inside of the heel if you can. And then if you can, bring your left, your right leg and your left hand at the same time. If you need to stand against a wall of hand control balancing, you can do this. You want to have the fingers on the same height as the same height as the toes. So it might look like a T if you're more flexible, bring the foot up higher, closer to the shoulder. Lean a little bit to your left so you can again keep the straight line from the toes to the fingers. Look up. Offer it up. Be like a dancer, magnificent and poised and graceful. Be very flexible and try to bring your left hand to your foot in front and pull the foot right up close to the head. And then you can maybe extend your right arm out. So just again, option for advanced practitioners. Do as appropriate for you. From here, bring the foot down gracefully. Try it on the other side. Watch the body moving. Move it just the way you want to see it realized graceful, a divine offering. If it doesn't quite happen that way, don't worry about it. Just try your best. It's the effort that's most important, not the result. Don't get attached to the results or the ex and have no expectations. Good. Again, if you want, you can, if you're more flexible, you can take the foot in your right hand, hold the front up, bring, bring your hand around from the foot, Hold the outside edge of the foot and push your left arm against the leg. Release, bring the leg down. Come to the back of the mat. From here, step your left foot forward, lean down, bend your knees, you can rest your belly on your thigh. You can keep your hands apart like the wings of an eagle or join your hands together, interlace your fingers, open up the palms, toppling tree. Let the fall towards your toes in either case, in both cases. Push your chest forward and see if you can get your right leg up higher than the head. If you have your hands together, try to pull them over your shoulders. If you're doing gliding eagle, imagine you're soaring from a great height at great speed. Now bring your left hand onto the ground. Stay on your fingertips. Turn to the right. <coughs> Alachandrasana. Raise your right leg up as high as you can. And bring the right arm up. If it's too much, you can either, if you can't get the extension, you can come onto your block, on the, bring the block underneath your hand, or you can just come onto your knee. Do it from here. So just use your imagination to find your way into it's a pose that where you can find steadiness. You can come to the tap into the consciousness of the pose. Open yourself up to divine grace again. And from here, step down, bend your left knee, and come back down. Good. 
Try it on the other foot now. Take a step forth the right foot. Come down, hinge at the hips, belly on your thigh, bend your knee to make that connection. And take your left leg up. If you're having trouble coming to the pose, you can always bring your index fingers down first. Lift the leg, and then you can add in your arms and you feel comfortable. Keep your gaze fixed, either an eagle or again, join your hands. Open up the palms, pull the hands over your um, onto, over top of your shoulders. Make sure you point your toes, make it look pretty. And from here, oops. Into Alachandrasana. Right fingertips come down, turn to the left, raise the left leg up higher, and bring your left arm up. Come onto your knee if you need to, do the modifications, use a block, go against the wall. Just put your best effort forward. And then come down, bend your right knee, come down. All right, so one more. Bend down, fingertips on the ground to start, but then bring your left hand to your left ankle. The index finger along the outside of the heel. And bring the right leg up. If you're very tight in the hamstrings you can try, you, and you need to bend your knee, it's okay. Just, just, uh, just keep extending through the toes. You want to try to bring your belly against your thigh and have your foot eventually over the right foot, uh, the, the left foot. And then you can see you can hold your breath, move your other hand to the inside the ankle, the right fingertip along the inside the heel, gaze beyond your toes. And bring the foot down. Breathe in, extend to the crown, exhale. Feel like a rag doll. Learn to let go of the effort immediately. Reset. And then find your way into the other side. So the right hand comes to the ankle, index finger pressing against the outside and the heel, and raise the left leg up as high as you can. Straight line from toe to toe. Good. And from here, you can see if you can bring your other hand, walk your left hand closer, hold your breath so you can get your hand on the inside of the heel. Gaze beyond your toes. And then release, bring the foot down. Inhale, bring the head forward, exhale, flop down again. Good, now, roll your way up. Stand in the middle of the mat, facing the long edge of the mat. Fingertips on the same line as your elbows. Jump your feet apart, make like a star. Now turn to your left. If you're facing the wrong way, um, away from the camera, you can just jump around 180 degrees so that you, when you turn to your left, you can see the camera or the, the screen. And reach forward. Get a sense of purpose or reflect a sense of purpose and direction, determination and courage. Bring the right arm out to meet the left. If you need to, you can lift the back heel up. So you can turn your square hips off, bring the head back. This pose says, I'm yours to do service. Grant me higher devotion. Lower the knee down. From here, left hand on the left knee, push into your knee, lean away from the leg. So you can slide your right hand back. Keep your seat nice and close to the front heel if you can. Curve the side body. You can stay here, or you can see you can turn towards the front, slide your hand in a little bit, and move your left hand to ins um, inside the leg. And keep on pushing your chest up, your head back. Now those of you who want, you can see if you can move your hands so your fingers are on the cup around the outside of the knee, your thumbs pressing on the inside, just behind the knee. And bend your leg up, point the toe, Bring your head back, eventually maybe the foot and the head will meet. Again, this is an option, not important if you can't do it. 
If you find it balanced, you'll bring the arms up, chain pose, reach the arms back. Kapyasana, beautiful pose of offering. So if you're doing Kapyasana, your leg is down. You're trying to make a form of a crescent moon, radiate your inner light. And then coming back from here, the hands on the inside of the foot. Move your left foot out a little bit more. Fall to your right. Try to get your right hip and your right forearm to come down. Roll to your left, left forearm comes down. So I'll do it facing this way so you can see. So not like this, your foot way away from your shoulder on the outside, or like this with your knee going out to the side. Try to keep your knee close. Just bring your foot out as much as you need to to line the heel in the knee. The shin is vertical. And keep on pulling your body forward. If you can't come down to your forearm, stay on your hands. And keep telescoping your chest forward. Feel as though you had rocks in your hip pockets or sitting on top of your seat. And maybe this, with that visualization, your hips will come, become very heavy and then want to come down further, followed by the pelvis maybe even right down onto the chest. If you're right down on the chest, you want to take a bind, you bring the left arm around the, in front of the foot, around the outside and underneath the knee, over your back. Your other hand comes on top of your seat, you join your hands together over your seat. Now from here, Come back onto the hands. Bring your hips back. Do this way again. Aldahana Manasana. Bow to your leg. Try to get your chest on your thigh. Your shoulder is beside your left knee, left shoulder. And keep on trying to telescope your chest forward. Imagine that you can try to get your chest beyond your knee. Now, if this is very easy for you, Hanamanasana. Lift the head, hinge the seat forward again, coming back into lunge, bend the toes under on the back foot, and start to slide your left foot forward. Try not to slide so forward that your left foot goes away from the other one. Keep your hips more or less even. Walk your hands back alongside, just beside your hips, shoulders over your hips. Good. Always do so in a mindful way. And if you can come all the way down, you can do variations as you see fit. You can bring your arms over the head and express all the qualities of Hanuman, the devotion, the courage, most of all the faith. Anything is possible, especially when you're in observance of the ethical rules and have some good con and, and have good concentration. Cultivate them both by practicing them constantly. Now from here, release. Vasistasana is next. So a variation for those who are more advanced. You can take your lead forward, take the big toe with your two piece fingers and the thumb. Push into your hand, drag the leg back. Lift up the seat, spin around on your right foot and then bring your left leg up. Okay, if this is not accessible, if you're here, you can just scoot your right knee in left foot back, you still stay on your right hand, bring your left arm up, and then at some point, if you want, you can come to the full pose, bring your right foot underneath the left. And keep your left foot alternatively in front, hips up, any variation you like. Make sure you don't fall into the shoulder. And come back into uh, plank position, down the facing dog, and bring the left foot forward. Now if you can, you keep your knee up off the ground, going to Padivita Pashukanasana. Raise your right arm up, and then go to the outside of the leg. I better do it this way. So the armpit's sitting on the outside of the knee. Left hand pushes into the right, they start the shoulder, but then as you push the left hand down the right, the body comes up higher, the southern chest comes to your thumbs, and you take your left shoulder all the way back. 
you need to, you can lower the knee down. It might be easier the right knee down. If you want to take the bind, push the seat back, create more space between your knee and your seat so they have more room for the arm to go underneath the leg. Use the left hand to guide the hand underneath. Worm your hand all the way around. Left hand goes over your back, pull your hand out a little bit more and then hold it from underneath. If you want, you can lift your back knee up off the ground. Hold the breath and then push into the roots of your toes. Push back through the left heel. And send your left shoulder all the way back. Straight line from the heel all the way to the crown. Break the pose. Coming back. Hands on either side of the left foot and walk the left foot back. That's uh, right. Not walk the left foot back. Just spin on your feet, turn to the long side of the mat, arms out and come up. Go to the right now. Again, turn around 180 degrees if you're facing the wrong way. You can't see the screen. Reach forward. Embody all the characters of those that you're representing. Be like a shape should emerge between the forms or, or flow between the forms of grace and fluidity without effort. Left arm up. Another expression of warrior, this time really tapping into the devotional aspect. Become the warrior. Embody all the characteristics. They're already within you. Lower the knee. Flatten up the toes, and from here, right hand slides to the knee, uh, pushes into the knee, left hand slides down the f towards the foot. Try and keep the side body long, no wrinkles. And if you want, you can slide your left foot in, this left hand in, turn to the front, and take your right hand to your knee as well, your back leg can't reach, you can keep your hands on the seat. And from here, you can either do Kapiyasana, arms up, just like that, or if you have your hands on the knee, push, move your hands so your hands, fingers are cropping the knee from the outside, so push into your back and knee with your thumbs, and you might be able to guide the foot more easily to the head. Bring the head back. If your foot finds a head, you can hold on to the foot if you need to. Or if you're studying a pose, your foot's on your head, your head's on the foot, arms can come up. Break the pose. Lizard. Move the right foot out. So you go right a little bit more. Slide your left toes back, sink down to your left. Try to get your left hip and left forearm come down, go to the right. Again, please, always moving according to your condition. No forcing yourself into a position of pain or state of pain or distress. This is, remember how you feel is affecting everyone. Keep moving your chest forward. Good. Do the best that you can. Just come to a place where you can find the ability to still the mind. If you're constantly um, obsessed with the physical aspect of the postures, you won't find that ability to quiet the mind. If you want to take the bind, your right arm goes over the foot, around the outside and underneath the knee. And then your left hand can join the right hand over the back. Be like a lizard setting itself on a warm earth. Make way to come up. Hands underneath the shoulders and push your way up. Send your seat back over your knee, your left knee. Bring your toes up on the right foot, Abhahana Manasana. Bring your chest, your belly down onto your thigh. Try to move your chest beyond your knee. 
bring your attention to all those areas where you want to find release, in this case probably the hamstrings. All your attention will attract the prana there and bring about that release that you're seeking. Now either stay here or bend the toes under your back foot, hinge your seat forward and start to slide your right foot forward. As you close your maximum, you can walk your hands back alongside the hips. Try to keep your shoulders over the hips. And then again, pulse. Lightly trying to make your way down. Do so in a mindful way. No hard, aggressive, forceful movements that can um, bring about injury. If you're steady to pose and you're rooted down or you can or you have a block underneath the leg and keep it steady, you can take your arms up if you like. Reach up. Show up again in every pose. Limitation is a high form of reverence. Love all beings. And then from here, release. Getting ready for Vasistasana. So if you know that if you have the flexibility, you can take hold of the big toe with the thumb and index finger, a uh, piece of fingers and index finger, push the back toes and drag the foot forward towards you. And then keep pushing on your foot, turn on your left at the same time. Come into Vasistasana. Or Otherwise, just pull the heel towards you and then slide it back. Left hand's a little bit from the shoulder so you can keep your arm fully extended. Make sure you don't drop into your shoulder and lose your neck. And then you can come up into your full side plank. Any variation you can do with a lot of things. If you like, slide your right toes back, spin on the other palm. So anywhere you like to go. Do the same variation as you did the other time, the first time. And return to downward facing dog. From here, right leg comes up and back. Ekapada Adamukha Savanasana. And step the foot between your hands. From here, lift up. If you can, keep your left knee up. Left arm comes up. And go down and across to the right. Rest your armpit on the other side of the knee. Hands can stay in Anjali Mudra. Notice how the belly comes higher in the thigh, so that the center of the chest can come and make its way towards the thumbs. Roll the right shoulder back, or if you want, bring the back knee to the ground, and you can take a bind here. A little bit easier to do with your knee on the ground. Push your seat back, create more space between the back of the leg and the seat, so you can bring, and, and the back legs can bring the right hand to the elbow and guide the hand through a little bit more easily, more space. Use your other hand then, over your back, pull the hand further through, and then hold, join the hands together. Raise the right knee up if you can, left knee up if you can. Pull the right shoulder back, turn the face and chest up. Return. Bring your hands back, down on the ground on either side of the foot. Walk your way to the middle. Good, now bring your leg turn sideways here. Arms up to the side, and come all the way up. Hands to the heart center. From the solar plexus, a source of inner power, inhale up your power up to the crown. Make it available to all beings everywhere so all beings can be feel empowered as well. Exhale back down to the solar plexus. Keep clearing that channel, keep it open so you can keep on sending your power up there for all to benefit. Now, easy chakrasana. Bring your hands to your seat, turn your toes out a little bit. Bend your knees so your knees come a little bit over the toes. Push into your seat and then really stay having your feet, hips all the way forward and push into your seat, pull down at the same time. Allow the head to fall back slowly. If it's too much, you can keep your chin in your chest. Walk down one hand at a time. 
or sliding down your legs one at a time. Hold just below the knees and then use your hands to guide the movement of the legs. Thighs roll outwards, chin roll inwards. Push your hips forward and up. Try to straighten your legs. Keep the spiraling action. If you want, can you even slide your hands further down? If you're flexible, can you maybe even step on your heels? Always according to your abilities and your comfort level. And then to make your way back, walk hands back at one at a time, push into seat, pull down, tuck the chin in, engage your legs, come back up. Arms out to the side. From here, join your hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, inhale, lift the head, lift the heart, push shoulders back, hinge forward. See if you can bring the head towards the ground, so you who are flexible can maybe you take your head right down onto the ground. If it's uh, too much on your shoulders, you can hold your opposite elbows, maybe this is a little bit easier, and just keep your elbows close to your back. So depending on your shoulder flexibility, remember, do so with mindfulness. If you're very flexible, you can try to get your hands to the, your hands to the ground but in front of your head. Try to get your head between your feet. Those you want, you can release the hands, place them down on the ground in tripods, the fingers behind your heels, or and come up into headstand, or if you want, bring your forearms inside your head, and then come up, straddle your legs up. Stay for about 10 seconds if you're coming up, otherwise keep your head down. Those who want can hold their breath, and see if you can press your head up off the ground. Those who feel comfortable, you can lift your head up. Sometimes it's easier to split your legs, Now wherever you are, straddle, come back to the straddle. If you're up, I mean, and then in an inversion, uh, uh, headstand, and then bring your feet down. Just not moving them, but the same place as you started. Arms up to the side, come all the way up. One more easy chakrasana. Turn your heels in, hands on the seat, bend your knees. Really push your hips forward. So your hips go behind, your knees go beyond your toes. And then allow the heads go back. If you can, you can slide your hands one at a time down the backs of the legs towards the knees. If your head is close to ground, you can see the floor easily. And again, if you're comfortable and if you're knowledgeable in the pose, right hand comes down to the ground, then left hand, Urdhva Dhanirasana. back from Urdhva Dhanirasana, the same way, right hand back onto your back of the knee, just underneath the knee, push your knee forward, into the back knee, and then the other hand, same way, and the rest of us, along with the rest of us, walk your way back up, push into his seat, pull down, and come back up, arms back, hands back in Anjali Mudra, from the heart, inhale up to the space in the eyebrows, Exhale back down to the heart. Keep on offering everything up, all the benefits. Good. Now from here, arms out, jump your feet together. From here, lower down onto your knees. Actually, uh, yeah, sit on your knee, you sit on your heels. And then if you can, you can sit between your heels, Sutta Virasana. So we're gonna walk our way back here. Depending on your flexibility, you can either just slide your hands back and lift your hips a little bit, tilt the tail under, so your body stays straight to allow the head to fall back. If you can go a bit further, so you can come down to your forearms. Extend the shoulders and the head away from the knees. If you can, put your back on the ground. Keep your thighs, uh, try to move towards one another, glue the thighs together if you can. You take all your opposite elbows over your head. Take a deep breath in here, inflate. Exhale, 
soft lotus and cave in with belly button falling right through the body into the ground lower back sinking down and press into your feet with your hands if you're all the way down on the back push into your elbows lift your head up off the ground chin comes in from here press your way back up move your hands where the elbows were one at a time and sit up so here sukha gomukasana if you can however you can walk your hands forward in table and bring the right foot around in front the left knee stays in behind the knee and the, turn, the toes come out beyond the edges of the mat and sit between your heels. So the knees are trying to line up one on top of the other. Keep your back straight. Uh, let's go with the left arm up. Inhale, reach the left arm up. Push the elbow up and then further back behind the head and allow the hand to come down between the shoulder blades. Keep the elbow up high by pushing the elbow up with the hand. And then if you can, if you have mobility, bring the right arm up the back, join the hands together behind the back. Tug on the hands, bring them back down, to the hands further down behind you. Try to have the elbows in line with the spine, the head centered between the elbows. Look up. Rise up through the heart, the spine. Exhale, make sure you don't drop back down into your hips, but reground firmly through the seat and descend the shoulders. Release, tuck the chin in, allow the left elbow to come down and release. Shake out the shoulders. From here, bring your hands down on the ground in front of your feet. Lift up the seat. From here, walk around towards the right. Keep spinning on your feet in the same spot until you're facing forward again, and then lower down again. So now your left leg's on top. Again, if this is too much, you just sit. You just stay sitting on your heels with your knees, your thighs together. Okay, so from here, the right arm up. Use the left hand to guide the elbow up higher and then bend the hand down. Center the back. Push your elbow nice and high. Sink the shoulders down. If you want to take the other hand up, you can always use a strap, remember? Be mindful of your shoulders if you have any limitations or injuries, fast injuries. Push into the heart. Sink the shoulders. Sink the shoulders down away from the uh, ears and root down to this to the seat. Be disciplined in your practice. Remember it's all about offering up the fruits of the renouncing the fruits, delivering all the benefits to all beings. So you have to make sure that you're passing away that delivers benefits and not adverse effects and then release bring the right elbow down and then shake up the shoulders go from here head stand king of the poses if you feel very uncomfortable doing that you can just stay in hair pose bring the forehead down from the knees and then lift your seat up try to roll more on the back of the neck uh, you will probably roll more in the back of the neck if your seat is over your knees. If it's too much, just move your head forward a little bit. Push the belly button through the lower back. Now, if you feel comfortable, you can do a few things. Um, if you if you know headstand, by the way, you can go right into it. Otherwise, you can bring your hands out. So line up the fingers with the backs of the knees, walk them out further beyond the edges of the mat, and then lift the legs, the seat up. Walk your feet towards your hands, between your hands, and bring one leg up. And just see if you can pulse up and down. Up off the heel, and back down. And see if you get your heel up, and your seat is more or less over the shoulders. Keep pressing your fingertips, hold your breath, and just push, pull your toes away from the ground. So don't jump all the way up. Stay in control. Just lift your heel, 
and see if you can slide your toes even further towards you. Bend your toes back and you're up off the ground. Eventually, you keep pushing your fingertips, you can send your left foot back behind you. Your right foot and your left foot are around the same height as the hip. Good start. More conservatively, conservatively as you need to. Stay in the pose. Keep your tension centered on the space between your eyebrows. And coming back down. Rest in child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Roll your way up. Shoulder stand. So, we're going to move to the front of the mat. Easiest way to get in the, uh, um, easy way to get into the um, shoulder stand to use momentum. Tuck your chin in, roll back, push into your arms and send your feet behind your head. And then, Move your arms closer together, your elbows close together, draw your hands behind your back. So from in front you can't see your arms anymore, but behind your back. And from here, bring your hands onto your back, your heels, your palms more or less on the mid-back, your fingers facing towards the ceiling. And you can here, you can raise one leg at a time, really stretch up that right leg. And then the other one comes alongside it. Keep your hips forward, your toes in line with your chin. If that's too much, you can just stay with your knees close to your shoulders, hold them over your shoulders, or you can just, you might not come up so high, your legs might be at an angle, your feet beyond your head, that's okay. Just again, go to a place where you find steadiness. When you tap into the consciousness of the pose, when you emerge with the form, you might have more of an ability to find its tightness of the body, which will help you to help the mind quiet as well. If you have a lotus, go ahead and your lotus. If you want to try to bring your hands to your thighs, try to come right on the top of your shoulders so that you can stay balanced. If you have a lotus, try to push your knees up higher than the hips. All the attention on the space to the eyebrows. Keep on working out, improving concentration skills. Which does keep helping in meditation as well. Now, if you have a lotus, bring a lotus down against your body, Pindasana. If you know the full embryo pose, we you wrap your arms around the outside and join your hands underneath the feet, you may do so. If your legs are straight, come down in plow. Hands on the back. If your feet don't touch all the way down, so you can push gently into the seat. No forcing, no hard movements. The feet come down, great. If they don't, still great. Just do your best. Those you want can bring your thighs against your body and your knees on either side of the head. Try to remove all the distractions coming from the sense organs, the eyes and ears in this case. Shut them off. Good. Now listen carefully. Walk your feet over to the left. See if you can get your left knee down right, just on top, uh, bef um, beside, a little bit behind the shoulder. And then see if you can get your other knee down. You might be able to you roll on the back of the head a little bit more. And then you might be able to roll your way right up into um, standing on your knees and into camel. Push your hips forward and lean back. Bring right hand to the heel, left hand to the left heel. 
good. And then coming right back the other way. So bring your hands back down. Again, if you know this pulse, this variation, you can do it. Otherwise, stay in plow. Left shoulder on the left, just in front of your left knee. Push into the shoulder. Push into the back, the left, left side of the head. And return to plow pose. And then walk your feet over to the right. Drop your right knee down beside, a little bit behind your shoulder. Push into the shoulder, the knee. Tuck your chin in. And roll your way up. You can also just stay with your knees beside your shoulders. And then from here again, camel. Bring your hands to your feet. And then come right back. Most of the time is then doing the transition. From here, right shoulder comes down in front of right knee. Push into the shoulder, the knee, the right side of the head, and return to plow for hooks. And hopefully you'll end up in the same position as where you started on the mat. Now from here, hands behind your back on the ground, palms down, index fingers and thumbs together. Keep your legs close to the body, and then start to roll down. The seat lands on the hands. Keep bringing your legs down until about 45 degrees from the ground, and then lift your back up off the ground. Move your elbows in a little bit more. Push your chest up, bring the top of the head down. If it's too much, bring your legs down. Fish pose. If you want to go further, take your hands out from underneath. Hands in front of your legs, you, uh, same angle as your legs, hands together. Fast streak of breath. Breathe very fast as the nose like a sniffing dog. Now, keep your head where it is. Bring the feet down on the ground, close to the seat. A, a, a feet about hip width apart. Bring your fingertips beside your head. This is an option, okay? So, half uh, Ardha Urdha Danirasana. Fingertips beside your head. Lift your seat. Push into your fingertips. Bring your head back further towards your feet. Then spin, turn your hands around. Fingers facing a little bit towards the outside. And towards your feet. And you can stay here or take a half breath in and lift your head up. Urdhva Danirasana. Lift up the heels as well. And then press your chest forward. If this is too much, you can stay in bridge pose. The head, top, back of the head stays on the ground. Your shoulders stay on the ground, but you lift your hips up. And you try to get your knees in line, back to your knees in line with your heels. Okay, so whichever one you like. Stretch the body, especially in Urdhva Danirasana. If you're in bridge pose, your chest is right against your chin, if you can. And then lower the heels down, come out of the pose. Always with control. Lie on the back, breathe in, and breathe out. Let go of all fatigue, imagine you're fainting. Now from here, if you, um, we're bringing the right leg up, bring your knee onto your shoulder and hold the ankle. Ankle, um, ankle hold, and then if you need to, you can slide your left foot in. If uh, if you're limited in your flexibility, your hamstrings and your hips. Now if you can, you pull your foot closer towards your body. So your head, your foot comes over your head, toes behind your head. If you can, you can slide your left leg out flat. You're very flexible. You can see if you bring your foot to the ground, just beside your, your leg comes just against, your knee comes into the armpit and your toes might come to the ground beside your head. And then from here, bend your knee, half happy baby pose. The foot, holding the outside of the foot, your knee is just underneath your arm, close to the body, your heels over uh, on the same line as your back, your knee. If you can, you can slip your right arm in front of your leg. 
you're pushing down with the back of the arm into the back of the leg you can slip your hand underneath your seat if you like or if you can lift your head up slide your left foot in maybe you bring it right into your shoulder like you're doing a tuck and then push the foot further back behind the head pull the foot towards the left and you might be able to get your foot behind the head you have to kind of keep worming yourself into the pose so keep moving a little bit try to get your uh, push into the back knee so the knee comes close to the shoulder, uh, close to the ear even, and then you'll have more room to take the foot behind the head. And from here, release. Bring the leg down softly. Breathe in. Breathe out. Other leg, bring the right leg up. I'm uh, sorry, left leg up. You can slide the right foot in, however, if you like. Bring your knee to the shoulder, hold on to the ankle, and then pull the foot towards the head. And then if you come to can extend your right leg, right leg again, flat on the ground. Very flexible again, you can take hold of the foot. And see if you can bring the foot down, right to the ground, beside your head. Know your limitations. Half happy baby pose, bring the heel, uh, bend the knee again, the heel's over the back of the knee. Hold the outer edge of the foot, make sure that it doesn't ride, uh, ride up too much, try to have both sides of the torso uh, equal length. If you want, you can try to slip your left arm in front of your leg, over the back of the leg. Push your shoulder into the back of the knee. Try to push it up as much as you can. And then if you are flexible, you can try to take your leg behind your head, slide your right foot in if you need to, and then bring the knee right into your shoulder. Lift your back up off the ground, push the foot further back towards the ground, tug it towards the right, and then you have to raise the left hip up a little bit so your knee comes close to the shoulder, and this will allow you to more ability to get the leg more easily behind the head. I try to find the divine qualities in every pose, coming to the consciousness of the pose. Some are meant to just offer a challenge. Embrace the challenge. Otherwise, if you never try anything new, you stay in the same place in your practice. And when you make, don't make progress, you lose your enthusiasm. Break the pose, bring the leg down. Again, breathe in. Breathe out. From here, come to seat position. You can bring your arms over the head, you can roll to the side if you like, and come right up. Cross your ankles, make your way into onto your belly. Okay, so getting ready for cobra, bending the back the other way, feet uh, together like the tail of a snake, anchor down through the hips and the thighs, roll the shoulders back. Imagine having that boundless range of motion like a serpent. Bring your head back, shoulders back. Moving away again, push your chest forward away from the seat. Take your time to come up. Even just keep on trying to extend this to the spine out of its source. Push your heart far forward away from the seat so you don't jam up the lower back. Come up smoothly with extension on the mind. Roll down. Gently, don't fall down heavily. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again, bring your hands underneath your shoulders, heels on the palm roughly in line with your heart. Roll the shoulders back. 
make your way up. If you're having trouble with your back, you're limiting your back flexibility, you can hold on to the edge of the mat, tug on the mat, push your chest forward. Again, just trying to get create space in your lower body. Imagine your feet are anchored down, but you're pulling your body forward, your chest forward. Okay, eventually, you can lift your elbows up off the mat eventually. And then once you can let go of the mat, come up higher. And if you want to go further, you can move on to your fingertips. Try to get them as close to your hips as possible so that when you push into your fingertips, you can get almost your whole torso off the ground from just the tops of your legs are anchored down the, to the toes. You can spread your feet a little bit. And then from here, bend your knees. Bring your toes up. Try to point your toes and see if your toes will find the head. Imagine squeezing socks behind the knees. You want to keep them in place. See, really squeeze, point the toes. Bring the legs down if they're up. Come back down. Relax, breathe in. Breathe out. See yourself in the body of what you're representing. And then just play it out. Imagine your inner body. And then maybe you'll get closer. Now bring your heels up towards the seat. Take hold the ankles. Danirasana. Lift the chest. And push the ankles back into your hands. Away from your head. And you can either stay here with your thighs on the ground, or see if you can lift up, pull on the feet. Your legs are pulling you up. Try to get your feet high in the head. You can rock a little bit if you like. If you look up, maybe eventually you'll see your toes. Surrender to the pose. Just be one with the pose, one with the being, one with the form. Pull the heels towards you and then lower down. Relax, breathe in. Breathe out. Make your way back onto your uh, hands on your shoulders, make your way back up into the table, and then do your very similar pose but in another orientation. Hair pose, bend the toes under. Your knees are apart, your heels are coming close together, hands on the seat, lean back, engage your core so that you come back with control. Right hand on the right heel, left hand on the left heel. With thumb on the inside, the index finger on the outside. Push the heels together and uh, lock the baby thumbs, uh, fingers together. And push your chest up and your hips forward as though you're about to fall onto your thighs. Keep pressing down to the toes. Keep pushing into your heels firmly with your hands so you don't actually fall on your thighs. Bring the head back. From here, you can release one hand. Bring the right arm up. Reach up and back. And then try with the other hand. Lean back first, shoulders go behind the knee, heels, and then really press both the hand on both heels. Same time, bring the left arm back. Hips forward. And bring the hand down. And it's come by as you try to make your head back onto your heel, lean back a little bit so your hands find your heels more easily. Push your hips forward and up again. And then from here, bring your hands onto your seat. Push and seat, pull down, and bring it to your back up. Good. Now from here, lower down on the knees. I uh, no, lower down on the heels. Thighs together. Child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out all fatigue. Coming back. 
Bring your feet out in front, your knees together, your right hand, right hand behind the back, then sit in the back, left arm up, and press the forearm against the outside of the thigh. Push the lower back up and in, turn to the right. Keep both sides fly along, try not to make wrinkles in the side body again. Telescope the neck and the shoulders. Make sure your knees are not falling away from another. Keep your knees together. Keep your back straight. Now you can either stay here or lean forward and bring your left elbow down um, a little bit lower below the knees and bring your left hand down beside the right. And now push into your hands, with your breath, lift your seat, bring your head forward. If you want, you can bring your head down to the ground, right side of the head, and then bring your feet up. You can do it without bringing your head down. Stay there. You can even go into Kodinyasana and bring the left leg up and back. You can do it with your head on the ground too. And then come back, press into your hands, come down gently, go to the other side. This is again not important if you can't do it. Raise your right arm up and press the arm into the thigh. So when the mind is resisting a lot and just looking at, at the possibility and just thinking it's really not possible right now, then you don't have to force it. Eventually, you get familiar with the idea, you keep thinking about it, and maybe at some point, the body, you'll feel ready. And then that's when you try. But just do your best with what you have. Now again, you can stay in this pose in a twist or lean forward, bring your right hand down. Your left elbow comes right against the hip bone. And then move forward, your head off the ground or your left, your left side of the head on the ground. Allow your legs to sit on your arm. If you want, you can take the right leg up and back. Your left leg stays on the arm. Can maybe, if your head's down, you can see if you feel comfortable. Push into your hands, hold the breath, and lift your head up. Do your thing with control, and then back down. Press into your hands and come down. Now from here, lie on your back. Just for a few moments. Take a deep breath in once you're down on your back. Exhale, just imagine you're fainting. Pretend you're unconscious. Let go of all tension, all effort. All the muscles just relax instantaneously. Just drop all the tension out. Imagine all the muscles just dissolving into softness. The skin, the muscles, the organs become like fluid. Bones floating around in that fluid. Completely soft. Imagine you your form merging with others now, that fluid of yours, merging with all those around you who are in the same state. And just like this, water can conduct light, you can pass light in the water and it can go very far. Or imagine go very far, just imagine light of God that resides within, that illuminates the water, and as you are one with all beings, imagine how brilliant that light can be when you merge them all together, and then eventually becomes a sea of light. Keep on being that light that shines brightly. Think of that light as your guiding light, that warmth, 
the love of God. Send it out to all beings. Repeat yourself the following sentence three times. I see the divine light in all beings. That might give you more incentive to just always try to find a commonality among all beings. The sign of self-realization is when we see sameness everywhere in all beings and all things. Now, prepare to carry that out into the world with you. Prepare to sit in a way that is reverent, quiet, and, and uh, mindful. Close the practice with Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Instill the peace within and send it out to all beings everywhere. for coming. Have a wonderful day. Next week we should be back to 8.30 on Saturdays. See you then. Hopefully much love.